So which is worse, a high glucose peak which lasts only a short time or a not as high glucose rise which lasts much longer? We're going to look at that today and we'll also hear from someone who was moved to tears while watching one of my videos. What was it that brought tears to their eyes? Before we get to the pre-recorded portion of the video, I wanted to share this recent comment with you. An individual wrote this, High peaks are bad because blood glucose at those high levels is destroying small blood vessels. I asked a doctor which was worse, very high blood glucose for a short time or high blood glucose for an extended or prolonged time, and he answered that a high peak is worse for small blood vessels. My question was more like a math problem in trying to determine which was worse given that the area under the curve was the same, and the answer was that a high peak is definitely worse than a long extended lower curve. Well, I think that's interesting because peaks have always been a big deal to me. I hate glucose peaks that reach anywhere near that 200 milligrams per deciliter mark. In fact, for years I've shaped my own diet on accepting no food and eating no meal that would raise my glucose over 140. Usually 130 is my limit, in fact, except in special cases. And I've read various articles and studies which demonstrate the importance of low glucose spikes even if they do come down quite a bit by two or three hours after eating. Just today I found this on the internet. Why are blood glucose spikes a problem? Even though after a meal blood glucose spikes are temporary, several spikes a day, day after day, can raise your glycosylated hemoglobin or HbA1c level, and a high HbA1c level has been shown to raise the risk of long-term diabetes complications. If you're looking to lower your A1c, the last thing you'd want to do would be to have glucose peaks that reached over 150 at every meal, even if they don't last more than half an hour. In one study that measured diabetes and dementia, they wrote this, At the cellular level, fluctuations in glycemia have been shown to more adversely affect endothelial function and induce oxidative stress compared with sustained hyperglycemia, potentially leading to greater cerebrovascular damage and cognitive decline. Now that's a lot of fancy verbiage, but what they're saying is if you want a sharp mind in your old age and you want to avoid dementia, you need to stay away from sharp glucose peaks. And if you have to choose between those sharp, fast glucose peaks and plunges or sustained high glucose, the sustained high glucose, as bad as that is, would still be preferable to the sharp glucose rises and falls at every meal. And what that means is that the super high carb plant-based folks who admit that their diet does create sharp peaks and valleys in glucose, but they take comfort in the fact that at least within two or three hours their blood sugar is back to normal, or sometimes quite a bit lower than normal, well, maybe they shouldn't be quite so smug. I've said it before, but I'll say it again for the newbies. My diet is not really a low-carb diet. It is a low-spike diet. But of course, in order to keep my spikes low, I have to keep my carbs low. My glucose never rises precipitously, and it never plunges precipitously. It just slowly rises and gently falls, and I'm satisfied with that. Okay, let's go to part B. This comment was left by a man under the the uh, video I did about how you can use low-carb tortillas, either the bought kind or kind uh, that you can make in your microwave, to make all kinds of foods, including pizza, including tacos, quesadillas, fajitas. There's just a tremendous variety of things you can do that are low-carb, and they're the foods that we always thought we had to give up. So this man writes this. He said, Dennis, this video brought tears to my eyes because finally you brought me the recipes that I can eat. Thank you to you and your lovely wife. 
Well, I have to say this comment, it was just a little short one, but it really touched me. It almost brought tears to my eyes uh, because how deeply this man felt about me handing him something that he could use to broaden his menu, his diet. And it made him realize that there is life after going low carb. Tacos are not off the menu. We just have to do some modifying. Fajitas, yes. Pizza, yes. Quesadillas, yes. And gave him some options, gave him a, a way to make one in the microwave, showed him some things you can buy. The guy says, I was just, I was in, I was in tears. My eyes had tears in them, just realizing what can be done. Well, I can identify with that. When you first find out you have diabetes, it is a scary time. And when you first realize that you definitely need to cut the carbs in your menu, in your diet, uh, it can be depressing. Thinking, I can't eat potatoes, I can't eat rice, I can't eat pasta, all desserts are gone, pancakes are out, oh, woe is me. And it made me realize that a lot of people need more specifics in terms of what they can eat. Uh, and, and I intend in the future to make a few more videos than I have about ways you can adjust your diet and foods you can eat and menus you can use, uh, recipes you can use, I should say. Uh, when I was in that place of knowing I had to go low carb and not knowing a lot of menus, uh, I had really two ways to develop my diet and the foods I would eat. One was Mike the Meter, my blood sugar meter, telling me what I could and couldn't eat. And the other was a guy named George Stella who had a program on the Food Network channel. And George Stella was a low carber. He had, he had weighed, I think, something like 400 pounds and got down around 190. And he was just sold on low carb. But he was a chef. He was a cook. He was all into eating into foods. In fact, you can still, if you Google Lord, uh, George Stella, you can find recipes, YouTube George Stella. I think you can find some things. Uh, I don't know if he's still, I don't think he's still on the Food Network, but boy, he really helped me. And uh, just early on, I started watching him religiously every Saturday, I think it was. Uh, I would be sitting down there taking notes and uh, checking with uh, the internet to, to get the recipes and it was a great day when I found his low-carb uh, pancakes and then his low-carb blueberry muffins and all of these different recipes. And um, just not so long ago, I found another one that I, I liked a lot. So George Stella was a great help to me. But now there are 10,000 George Stellas around. No, not all named George Stella, but there are YouTube recipes about keto this, keto that, keto desserts, keto diet. So much, but you've got to get out there and do some research and think about it. So anyway, one thing you have to realize is that uh, it's not going to be that bad. You really can do this, and you're not going to eat terrible. I mean, if I had to, I would live on mush and water, <laughs> I mean, for my health, but I don't have to. The truth is, I'm guessing I probably enjoy the meals I eat about as well as most normal people do, and in some cases more so. I have my little strawberry shortcake desserts with my low-carb muffin in a mug and about three strawberries. Uh, not many carbs, but so sweet, so good. Have a cup of coffee. Life is good. And, and at so many other different foods and desserts. Uh, I am not suffering at all, but it touched me, this man saying it brought tears to my eyes, realizing, yeah, I've got some things I can work with now. And, and that's really one of the things that I want to do uh, on this channel is, number one, give you talks and, 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 and share ideas and share testimonies. But two, put some foods in your hands, put some recipes in your hands. I, and like I said, I've kind of repented over not doing this more because uh, – of people like this that are saying, tell us what we can eat. Give us some ideas. Give us some recipes. So uh, my apologies for not doing it more. I'm not going to turn this into a cooking channel. That's just not me. I'm just not into that. But I will try to do it a little bit more. 
as well as encourage and inspire you. I've recently produced another series of my videos which can be downloaded even by many of you who are not living in the U.S. This is a second series where I group together what I consider to be the most important videos a newly diagnosed diabetic needs to know. When you're first diagnosed with diabetes, you typically have three problems. Number one, you know very little about diabetes and don't have much of an idea what to do. Number two, you're depressed and you feel like you have no hope. And number three, you really, really, really need some inspiration. You need a cheerleader who can not only encourage you, but give you a game plan to beat diabetes. It should start, of course, by seeing a great endocrinologist regularly. But these two series I put together can be a supplement to that. My first series, which has been out for a while, I titled Diabetes Emergency Kit, and it was meant to do that. But after putting that series together, I realized there was so much else I wanted to share. And so I put together a second series with the new diabetic in mind. In this series are eight videos containing 19 episodes of Beat Diabetes that I consider extremely important for you to really grasp. Now, I admit you can see these among my videos posted on YouTube, but by putting together the videos I consider most essential, I believe you can get the concentrated help you need in a hurry. I hope you'll watch them and re-watch them until they get down into your spirit. If you don't have either one of these series, I hope you'll get them both. You have my permission to make copies for your friends and to share them in groups, homes, or churches. A link to the pages where you can download these two series, Diabetes Emergency Kit, and this second series, More Fundamentals of Beating Diabetes, is in the description. Don't forget to like this video so YouTube will notice it and start recommending it to other diabetics desperately needing answers. And I hope you'll subscribe to this channel and then hit that bell icon so you'll be notified every time we post a new video. God bless and see you again soon.